<laughs> there is no time out. You really need to clean the pool. Right next to Joffrey. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> my friend, my friend, uh, Gina Miller, her daughter, the last time we first Wow. Surrounded by several people who've been in the business for so long. How exciting was that for you? And did you talk to him about it? Did you get any pointers from him? Um, I don't know if I got any pointers from him, but I was aware of like, you know, his amazing body of work. Um, I mean the thing is with Game of Thrones, like the majority like working with Peter, for example, as well, I sort of knew he was coming out in with this, like, you know, this amazing experience. Um, so sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating, but Julian, like, was really kind and, um, and it was just, it was just really effortless working with him. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I knew, um, I knew who he was and, and his work, um, but, kind of have to put that to one side when you're on set because otherwise you'll just be crushed by the <laughs> overwhelming pressure of who you're working with. That makes sense. Thank you for that question. That scene was epic. Oh, Thank you. That's so sweet. That is so tastefully. Oh, that's cool. Do we have anyone over there? Hi. Oh, great. Hi. 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 I'm Cassie. Um, I... I think I'd want to be Alison because A, she's a cool character like we've already described. <laughs> yes, B, she gets amazing costumes, of which I did not get many at all in Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> and she has great hair. Like everything about yeah. her character is fabulous. So. I bet you would also look good in that green color too. I look very good in green. So yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would like that. That's a delightful question. Over here. Hi, I'm Camilla. Um, I, uh, just having Ross be uh, a very diplomatic character, like Greta said, and just being smarter than she lets on, do you think, had she not met that lovely crossbow shot, uh, do you think she would have climbed to the ranks of, like, very Sir Littlefinger? Oh, of, of Littlefinger, like, all the way or a little bit? Um, I mean, I think so. She was a very ambitious character and smart enough, and I really think that, you know, people ask me, like, do you think she would have, um, gone on to like marry Littlefinger, that's one of the questions I've been asking, and I'm like, hell no. <laughs> she is like, no, he's <laughs> <watching her. laughs> um, So yeah, I think she really would have, because, you know, like you said, she was cunning and magnificent, I think, for your words, which I appreciate. Um, so yeah, I think she would have. I think she would have continued, like, her trajectory of moving up and being ambitious and climbing a ladder in the right direction. It's really yeah. fun. Thanks for that question. Over here. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Eric. I'm uh, nice to meet you. And uh, I was just wondering. Um, so, also, like, if, if uh, Roz did make it to the end of the series, what what side and like alliance do you think she would have gone with Ooh. by the end? How stop all the way? Yeah. <laughs> no question. No question. <laughs> That is one of the, my disappointments about House of the Dragon is there's just not enough Winterfell. There is no, so no. far, is there in any Winterfell? No, it's really yes. just I know, and I'm like, bring on the Winterfell. Yeah, and also, I'm more. curious, in that stage of, I don't know, long summer era, like what point, it's like 500 years before? Like, no, it's like 190, I think, before it came out. Oh, 100, 190 years before? Oh, 190, okay. okay. Almost 200. Somebody out there. 192. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the specificity. I appreciate specificity. Um, so I'm curious at that stage. I'm assuming they had the wall, and I feel like somebody referenced sending somebody to the wall at some stage. So I'm kind of curious. Like that's what I really want to see. Yeah. Is like, what is the score on the wall? Like, are the White Walkers even a thing? Like. Yeah. Where are the dialogues? I'm kind of curious about like the North in general. Yeah. Which um, 
We haven't touched on yet. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Oh wait, this side. Oh, sorry. Oh, thank you. Hi, thank you for being here. So, which character do you wish you had more screen time with? Ooh, ooh, that's a really good question. Good question. Um, you know, there were people that I never got to um, be in scenes with at all, um, which was kind of a bummer for me. I would have loved to have worked with um, Lena at some point, mm -hmm. so I say. That would have been nice. Um, but I did get to work with Sibel, who she can play Shay, um, who's still a dear friend of mine, and that was awesome. Oh, I was so glad. And I was like, please, let's get the scene together. And we finally did. Um, so were you friends can... before that? We were, yeah. We became so friends on like season, not before Game of Thrones, but we became, oh, okay. we became friends on season one. Cool. Um, so it would have been fun to have done a little bit more with her, I think. Um, I mean, honestly, like having the chance to work with any of the other actors would have been awesome because there's not a bad actor on the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That reminds me of something that House of the Dragon showrunners have been saying, which is that all the actors, it's just like having a garage full of Porsches. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just like that level of caliber. It's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Over here? Hey, it's May. Welcome. Um, now that we've seen the end of Game of Thrones, Bran is king and Tyrion in uh, a position of power. Who does Roz believe should have sat the Iron Throne? Oh, the million dollar question. <laughs> um, I think Sansa should have done it. Is that a popular answer? I can't tell. Um, <laughs> um, Sansa or possibly Arya. Um, one of the Stark girls, I think, should have done it. Um, you know, I'll be honest, I was a teeny bit disappointed with the ending. Controversial. You know, that's the first time Especially at that official Game of Thrones convention, this might be my first and last um, day here. <laughs> um, but yeah, because I mean, both of them were like such badasses. Yeah. Sansa's like amazing arc from being this kind of quiet, polite girl who liked to do needlework yes. to this absolute. Badass, yes. Um, that scene in the Eerie, I think it is. Yes. Um, when she comes descending down the staircase and she's like, all of a sudden she's like full goth. And she's got this amazing like black dress and like the black um, crucifix on, and I'm like, this is awesome. Um, so yeah, I think she would have, I think she would have done a good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love those answers. They both showed so much character growth. You know, I mean, they both they, they grew up on the set practically. Well, they yeah. did. They completely. Did. I mean, when they met them, they were like, I want to say like twelve or thirteen or something. They were teeny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, over here. Hi, it's my, my name is Melissa. Hi. I was going to ask you, uh, who is your favorite Game of Thrones character? Hmm. Well, kind of Sansa as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Tyrion might have been one of my favorites. Oh, good. You know, he was such a fighter. Um, Peter did such a beautiful, beautiful job um, portraying him. And um, I just think he was like so complex and so nuanced in so many ways. Um, and really, you know, he was in this position where he could have had so much power um, being from a family he was from, but was kind of an outcast and was constantly fighting um, for his place. Um, and so he sort of bridged the gap, I feel, between, you know, the, the families of nobility or, you know, whatever you might want to call them, and the, um, you know, the regular old folks of Game of Thrones like Ross. So I like, I loved that about him. Thanks. Yeah, he was excellent. And he also, I mean, he wasn't, certainly wasn't the only character in Game of Thrones like this, but he occupied such a fascinating moral gray area, I think. Yes. And we saw so much of his own moral compass shift and change over the course of the seasons. Yes. Yeah. And he talked really good shit. He did. <laughs> he really did. Let's see, is there someone over there? I can't quite tell the lights. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My question is, what's your favorite story of something that didn't go as planned or went wrong on set? Ooh, that's fun. Oh, um, something that went wrong on set. Let me. What are you willing to divulge? Take that, right? Like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
were just going through all the catastrophe. I mean, I don't know if it was wrong per se, it was as much as embarrassing, but in the turnip cut scene with Alfie, um, right at the end of the scene, and I'm, you know, off I go on the turnip cart, he throws the gold coin at me and I'm supposed to catch it. Oh, and I am terrible, terrible at throwing, at catching, generally anything, I was going to say anything with balls in general, I, I'm not good, but then I realize I should say it. <laughs> I'm terrible with balls, guys. Um, <laughs> There's the headline. We found it. We have it. Um, sorry, I lost track of what I was trying to say. Um, so I couldn't catch it to save my life. I was doing a terrible job. They kept on. He kept throwing it. I kept on missing it until finally they were like, "Uh, oh, we're just gonna CGI it." There you go. Um, so I don't think I ever managed to catch the coin, um, which is a wee bit embarrassing. Um, and then, otherwise, like, all the embarrassing moments happened offset, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. How much CGI work did you end up doing? I mean, that must be such a challenge as an actor. That's such a different I skill set. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really have any that in makes that sense. show, because I didn't really spend any time with the dragon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know, I know that there were, like, CGI backgrounds on, um, you know, some of the sets, like mm -hmm. the King's Landing. Sure. Um, when we were out on the... Um, you know, the dock for that scene. I know that, I mean, and pretty much everything you see in that is real. I mean, Dubrovnik is absolutely stunning. And you go there and it's like, wow, it's, you know, they didn't have to do much to embellish that yeah. amazing, amazing um, backdrop. But they did add in like ships going by and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, I didn't have to do green screen or anything. Huh. That's cool. Yeah, so not much on this project. I mean, it is pretty weird though. Yeah, it seems like just a completely different thing. Yeah, and I mean, some actors do entire movies where they're on the green screen yeah. and talking to CGI monsters, which is like people in blue spandex or whatever. Exactly, <laughs> covered in dots. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. It is. Go ahead. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, nice to meet you. Um, if you were in a band, what kind of instrument would you like to play? Oh, oh I like that question. Fun. Well, I play the drums very, very badly. <laughs> I don't care that I'm terrible at it. That is not the point. It's very therapeutic. I was going to um, say, that sounds oh, it's very hard. I absolutely love it. I go into the studio, which thank God is soundproofed for the sake of our neighbors, and I just like let rip. So I would be the drummer. Specifically, I would be the drummer from Tool. Um, wow, I would be Daddy Carey. Not expecting. Oh that. yes, and I actually have a recurring dream. Wow, <laughs> that Daddy, <laughs> that Daddy Carey falls ill, and I have to take his place on stage for a tool concert, <laughs> which is amazing because in my wildest dreams, would I be I mean, anywhere near as good as Daddy Carey? Extremely Carrie. intricate. Drumming. That's extremely. In oh yes, are you kidding me? The guy has. I can't remember. There's like this. It's insane. Word for when you. Do something different with all four limbs at the same time. Yes. yes. What is no, it? It's not even. It's not ambidextrous. It's something else. Say again. Polyrhythm. Polyrhythm. Is that, is that it though? Polyrhythm. There's rhythm. another word for like multi. Yeah. Limb but he does. does. So he can play like a different rhythm with That's both so his hands and both his feet all at the same time. Um, the guy is a freaking genius. I mean, all of Tula geniuses. Sure. And, May not, yes, you're a genius. <laughs> wow. So they're all amazing, but I would, yeah. So one of these days, Danny Carey is going to mysteriously fall ill, and I am going to take his place, and no one will ever go to another tour concert again. What a fun Thank answer. Thank you for the question. question. I love that question. Cool. Thank you. So wait, do you know how to play any tool songs now? Or are you like working? Oh God, no, are you kidding me? <laughs> My wildest dreams, I mean, I'm trying to learn Ed to Sandman right now, which is difficult. I mean, yeah, no. I just play along like terribly and kind of make up my own thing and don't really know what I'm though. doing, but it's it's awesome. It's like that I mean, sounds great. Yeah, and you have a studio place. in your house. Yeah, we have a studio on our property. Yeah. So, so cool. yeah, it's great because it's like fully soundproofed and kitted out. I can be as loud as I want and that's everybody so cares. Cool. Much. The tool thing I would never have guessed that's such a delay. I'm really glad oh, I'm a big, I mean, I'm going to say I'm a big metalhead, and then the whole debate of our tool is an metal band is going to open up. I don't know what you guys think. Y'all want to chime in on that one? Do you want to chime in or not? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's me. I'm like a 
Last, I just went to see Rammstein for two nights in a row, like, back in I caught COVID, which sucks, but it was totally oh. worth it. Um, I did two nights back to back and saw them at the Coliseum. Wow. That was awesome. That's amazing. That's so on my podcast, Nerdette, we interview an epidemiologist now and then. We like check in with uh -huh. her during the pandemic to ask sort of like where things stand. And that was her advice over the summer. It was just like, if you're gonna get COVID, just make it worth it. So exactly. Like, yeah. And it was the first concert I'd gone to like since the pandemic. Yes. Yeah. And I've worn N95 masks the entire time, yeah. which was really so for what I don't. I'm gonna like go on about Rammstein right now. And those of you who don't like them or don't know who they are, what is wrong with this woman? Um, but they have a lot of fire on their shows, if you're not familiar. And they have an area that's right in front of the stage called the foyer zone, which means fire zone. Um, this is like the splash zone. And exactly. And you pay, show like... Exactly. And you pay extra to be in the fire zone. Oh my god. And it's really hot. Like literally, you're, you can feel your makeup melting. Oh, it's seriously hot. And um, that sounds totally amazing. amazing. Yeah, it was really, <laughs> so good. Are you kidding me? I was like a pig in shit. I was so happy. <laughs> but I was wearing a mask the entire time. It was so oh incredibly hot and I still managed to get COVID. So. Oh. But it was worth it. Oh it was, my God. I'd do it all over again. I mean, better the fire zone than the grocery store or something. Well, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's funny. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing. We're good. Oh, sorry. Oh. Hello. I'm Hi. not really new. Of the magicians as well as Game of Thrones. And so I just kind of wanted to ask about filming each of those. Like which one did you enjoy the most? And what were some of your favorite scenes from the magicians? Well, I can't say which I liked the most. That's like picking between children. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, the magicians was fun in like a very different way. Um, I I loved that show. The show runs are amazing. The cast yeah. was so much fun. Um, I had a scene in um, I think it was season, which was the last season, season five. Yes, thank you. Um, with Hale Appleman, which I just loved. I loved working with him, so I think that was one of my faves. And then there's a scene um, that I have um, with Quentin, um, where you I first revealed as the Watcher Woman for the first time, which was really fun. Um, those of you who don't know the show, I got to play a character who kind of changed into like three different characters through the course of the seasons, and um, that was great. Is like my what a heart moment, except she's not evil at all. So, yeah, thank you. That's so cool. Those are an adaptation as well of that series. They are. Yeah. yeah. Did you read those books? I did. Yeah, I did. Phenomenal. Is it a number of books? I mean, I read The Magicians, but I did he do? It is a series, I think, of three books. Is it? Right. Oh, did I make that? Yeah. Up? yeah. No, I made it. Oh, okay, great. Good. Okay. So Sweet. I read the first one, I read The Magicians. I didn't read yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. I just had a follow-up question. Uh, you were talking about Anna Carey. Have you ever seen the YouTube video of a filming of him during the song Numa? Yes. <laughs> I, I show that to as many people as I can and get any kind of music. Yes, I know, me too. Like drum cam of him. I watch all of those YouTube videos and my friends are so sick of it because I'm like, guys, I found this new video of Danny Karen. And they're like, oh God. And I'm like, seriously? And they'll start watching and then they might like drift off or stop paying attention. I'm like, look. Look, oh get your eyes back on the screen. I'll pause it until you're ready. <laughs> Tool fans, man. I know. Real my high school boyfriend was obsessed with Tool, and he what made me watch so many of those yes. videos. And I was yes. just like, this, these are weird. Yes. <laughs> and if anybody interrupts you and you're listening to a Tool song or tries to talk over the time, it's like, you're not my friend anymore. That's so Please funny. leave. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So is that video, is it sort of like Jimi Hendrix Monterey Pop where like the camera can't actually capture how fast the musician is playing? I mean, you can capture it to like some extent, sure. yes, because it's literally like right here, so you can see um, down on his cool. feet and he's got like, I don't know, like three or four drum pedals or something, he's playing the world at the same time. guy's an octopus. Um, he's amazing. And he's also enormous. He's wow. like, uh, like seven. I suppose that arm span. Really exactly. Huge <laughs> arms, that's how he does it. There you go. You just need extender arms. I just need to extend your arms and to have started playing drums when I was like two years old. So yeah, yeah, there you I go. I should have to say what I can't I can't dream, literally. <laughs> that's it.